www, the beginning of every website, or at least most of the time, and these days web browsers usually hide that part anyway, but if you click on it, you can still reveal it. But if you've been around the block a few times, you may have occasionally come across websites that don't start with www, but rather something like www1 or 2 or even 3 or something else. What is the deal with those? Why don't they start with www? Why do they do what they do? So to understand what's going on, first let me quickly go over what exactly is www? Why do you see it at the beginning of every website or most of them? And really it turns out that www is just a regular old subdomain like you might see for mail.google.com or blog.example.com. Subdomains may be used like that to differentiate between different parts of the website like the blog versus the main website or it might be used to distinguish different types of internet services on that server. So ftp.example.com would be what you use to connect to the FTP part of the server, whereas if you just go on the regular example.com, the web browser uses that. And www is actually just a regular subdomain just like those examples. It's not a special subdomain of any kind. You can add www if you want or not, just as a regular DNS record like you would for adding any other type of subdomain to your website. And actually the whole www thing started kind of as an accident. You see, one of the first websites out there was for the CERN laboratories. And basically they wanted to create a couple different pages. So for the main info page, it was meant to be info.cern.ch. And they were also going to create another one for the World Wide Web project, which was www.cern.ch. Apparently though, these DNS records were switched somehow. So if you wanted to go to the main website, you just go to www.cern.ch and they never really bothered fixing it. Or at least by the time they did fix it, it was so popular that other websites actually started using www in front of them. Nowadays though, especially, it doesn't matter what you type in. A website can choose to either use www or not. You can type in either one and then the website will just redirect to accommodate whatever a user wants to do. And a lot of times though, you can choose whether or not to have the naked domain redirect to the www version. A lot of websites do that. Even if you just have to type in google.com, it might redirect to www.google.com. And you might think, what's the point of that? If it's hidden in the web browser anyway, why even have that? Well, it turns out for larger websites, at least with a lot of traffic, it is beneficial to have the www subdomain. Now I'm gonna explain why as simply as I can, but it is probably gonna be very technical. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But basically a naked domain, so just example.com, when you go to set a DNS record, which is basically telling the browser what IP address to go to on the internet to actually access the website, the naked domain can only use what's called an A record, which basically means this domain is assigned to this IP address, which corresponds to a specific server. Subdomains, however, can have either A records, which redirect to a specific IP address and therefore a specific server, or they can have what's called a CNAME DNS record, which means it doesn't have to just be an IP address it redirects to, but it can actually redirect to another domain or subdomain. This can be beneficial because it can allow a lot more flexibility to whoever is running the server that you're pointing to. So say for example, you're using Amazon Web Services to host your website, and you're given a specific server that you want to redirect your website to, and it's hosted on that server. If you use an A record, it's going to point to a specific IP address specifically to that server, it's fine, it'll work until potentially there is maybe an overload on the server, the server goes down for whatever reason, then you would have to go into your own website's DNS records, fix it, assign it to a different server, and Amazon can't really do anything about it. They're not gonna switch the IP address of all the servers around just so your website now is redirected to one that works. Instead, what you could do is set your DNS record on the website to a C name, such as server1.aws.com. In this way, Amazon can detect, oh no, the original server we were using is down, so now we'll just change server1 dot aws.com to redirect to a backup server. And that way you don't actually have to do anything. Your website will automatically, because Amazon is managing this presumably, Amazon will handle the switching and they don't have to change any IP addresses around. They just change where that name points to. So basically if you run a big website that may potentially require some load balancing, 
having a www as the subdomain, the main website, makes it a lot easier to automatically have the servers rebalance and redirect all the traffic around, and it's not so simple to do that if you have a naked domain. Besides just the technical reasons for website owners, I do actually think www has some benefits to regular users as well, especially because nowadays there are so many more top level domains. Before, originally you probably know, it was always .com, .net, .org, maybe the occasional .gov or maybe one for your specific country. But these days there are way more. In fact, there are over 1500 top level domains and some of these are really weird. It's like .movie, .delivery, .today, .earth dot download. And even major companies have bought up their own top level domain with their company name. For example, FedEx, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Panasonic, Sony, Microsoft, way more. These are all top level domains now. If you want to look at the full list, you can view it on the IANA website. That's the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. I'll put the link in the description. They just have a list of all of them on their site. Though I will point out that for the company top level domains, those companies definitely have control over that. So it's not like you can just go out and buy a dot Microsoft domain name. They obviously would not allow that. But anyway, my point is if you or a company buys one of these weird, unusual top level domains, say they go to put their site on a billboard. Maybe Microsoft says, visit us at cloud.microsoft. You're like, wait a minute, what is that? Is that a website? Like, and someone who doesn't know about these weird top level domains might not understand what it is. Or is that like an Instagram or social media handle that they just forgot to put the at on or something? But if you put www.cloud.microsoft, it makes it much more obvious or at least hints towards that it is actually definitely a website and not just some weird, I don't know, branding name. But now that we know what www is, we can go back to the main topic of the video. Why do some websites not use www, but rather www number or whatever? One example I came across, which kind of inspired this video, is when I was trying to go on the website Wolfram Alpha, which is a super useful website, by the way, and I accidentally mistyped it as wolframalpha.com. Turns out that domain is also owned by the Wolfram Alpha company, so they probably just bought it because it was a typo. But I noticed when I looked at it that it was weirdly showing www25.wolframalpha.com. I was like, what's up with that? And there are other websites out there that are accessible, not with www, but for example, www1.citibank.com.au, that's the Australia version of Citibank, that's accessible and that doesn't use www. Well, like I said earlier in the video, www is not a special subdomain of any kind. It's arbitrary. If you wanted, you could have your website redirect to the main page being zzz.example.com or whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be three letters. It could be mainpage.whatever.com, anything. But if you did do that, it might confuse people and most people know www, so that's just what every website uses. But if you go on a website and it says www2.whatever.com, there may be a couple reasons for it. First of all, it could be basically the backup server. So for example, it could be used for load balancing, where if the main www server is down, then it could be set to redirect to whatever the www2 server is. However, it's not really an elegant way because we already kind of came Came up with the thought that, well, if you use www, then it can already redirect sort of to a different server. So there is technically a way you can do it using different www subdomains. It's just not very elegant and it's more obvious to the user that something is going on in the background. But basically most of the time, if you do see www2 or another number, it probably is a backup server that you're accessing. Now with my Wolfram Alpha example, you may be wondering, wait a minute, why does that extra domain that's just a typo have WW25. Surely that does not need a backup if it's a typo domain. There can't be that many people accessing it to require a backup. And that is actually something I'm kind of curious about. If I go on the main actual wolframalpha.com, if I type in WW25, which is the same as the typo one, that's not a valid subdomain, but WW25 is. And most other numbers actually are. If I go through one through 99, basically, all of those are valid subdomains. There are a couple exceptions like www2 and www4 for some reason, but if you go to basically any of the other numbers, it does redirect to the main website. And actually, if we were to ping www3.wolframalpha.com, you can actually see it has a different IP than the main www subdomain. With other of the www subdomains though, it does also just redirect back to the main domain. So 
clearly some of these subdomains have another server, which might be a backup. And I don't know how it's arranged on the back end, but I'm assuming these are all just backup domains in case it's needed. So that is an example of at least some of those subdomains showing probably being for a backup server. Now, why does wolfamalpha.com have WW25 as the main subdomain? Well, I don't know, maybe it's set to be on the 25th backup, which kind of would make sense. It's like, put it on a server that doesn't really need any usage most of the time. Or maybe it's just completely random and no one really cared when they were setting up because it's a random typo domain or something like that. But in any case, hopefully now you've seen some examples, you know why you might come across a weird subdomain. It's not really anything special. It's just kind of like a backup potentially or just a design choice. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is one where I was talking about what happened to the A and B drives in Windows. You almost never see them anymore. So I'll put that link right there. You can check that out by just clicking on it. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.